Chrysler from the Sea Fleet. And guess what? They only have one Chrysler remaining. Get to your battle station and let's send these land lovers down to Davy Jones. Look at those explosions. The Sea Cruiser has started to sink. Keep on demolishing those by superior firepower. Our special forces have boarded the pirate cruiser and are attempting to take control of the bridge. Make sure to give them cover fire. Over. Keep laying down the heavy fire. Our attack is working. The pirate cruiser is sinking. Over. No, no, no! This can't be! You are supposed to sink the sea cruiser, not ours! Land lovers, all of you! This is an embarrassment to all pirates! Greetings, warriors of the Trident Isles. Today, I am extremely excited to tell you a bit about the biggest update coming to Navy Simulator since the addition of planes, ship customization. But before we get into that, let's dive into the new cruiser versus cruiser event coming in this update. So, how exactly does the cruiser raid work? What's going on, y'all? All right, so for the cruiser versus cruiser event, Two cruisers will spawn on either side of the map, one for sea team and one for pirate team. And it's pretty much a classic naval battle. The first team to have their cruiser sunk or captured will lose the event. So for this event, there's a new UI at the top of your screen. It'll show you the status of both cruisers on the map, um, like they're flooding, if they're being captured or not, and how close they are to sinking. To capture a cruiser, the enemy team has to hold the captain's seat for 30 seconds, and if your team takes it back anywhere in those 30 seconds, then the timer will reset. So you can't just bootgang it and like drop in and snag the captain's seat and win the event, you have to actually hold on to it. The UI will also show how close a cruiser is to sinking, it'll say like X amount of studs above the waterline. It'll start at 30, and once it drops to zero, then that cruiser is considered sunk, and the enemy team will win the event. What are some good ways for me to defend my team's cruiser? Can it spawn any ships? Defending your team's cruiser ultimately comes down to teamwork. Ideally, the ship should be fully manned with a player on each battle station, ready to defend the cruiser against anything that's thrown at it. The cruiser is packing heavy weaponry such as the 5-inch naval gun, capable of breaching hulls. To defend against the air, the cruiser is loaded to the brim with anti-air. For anti-submarine precaution, the cruiser has a depth charge station and the ability to spawn sub-chasers and a few other small boats off the side of the ship. How can I spawn on my team's cruiser to get into the battle? You can spawn on it just like any other ship. Just head over to the deployment board and click deploy. So in this update, the cruiser will be removed from the main ship shop. Why was this change made? So when people would buy cruisers from the ship shop, if they weren't doing like a mega division event, then they would go undermanned. Like you need so many people to man a cruiser properly, you need at least 10. And I would see cruisers on the map with two people. And sometimes there would be just multiple unmanned cruisers sitting on the map, um, lagging the server for pretty much nothing. So our idea with this event was to take away the problem of having a cruiser always be undermanned. If we turn it into an event and have your entire team focus on keeping this one cruiser alive, then you'll get enough crew to have an actually um, good experience with it. You won't be just three people trying to keep a cruiser alive, not even able to man all the main guns. So the moment you've all been waiting for, ship customization. Now, in Navy Simulator, you can edit your ship's loadout to equip various types of weaponry. So Yummy, what are some of the new weapons coming to the game? Almost all turret models have been revamped with this update, along with additional 5 new turret models added to the arsenal. Starting with the smallest is the M134 minigun. This turret puts the heat on infantry with a fast fire rate and is a great turret for suppressing fire. Moving up a class is the 37mm Striker Grenade Launcher. This weapon is extremely short range compared to the other turrets, but definitely packs a punch against groups of enemies. With high bullet drop, you'll need to arc your shots to hit your targets. This weapon is for sure skill based. Next turret is the 57mm. This weapon is essentially a miniature 3 inch. This turret has a 30% chance to breach hulls, and besides the 3 inch, is the only other turret that can sink large ships. Pilots should be shivering their timbers for the best anti-air available now, the ZPU-2. This turret is a demon against planes and essential to have if you want to keep those pesky bombers away. Moving up into the heavy tier weaponry sits the Slater. Well oiled and armored, the Slater is an infantry slayer. With the dual fire capabilities of this gun, it can shred any ops in sight. 
My prayers go out to any visitors affected by this gun in the future. So how am I able to customize my ship? Alright, I know you guys are eager to make the most ridiculous layouts you can. Head over to the ship shop and hit the button that says edit armament, and there it'll take you to the armament editor where you can swap out the turrets on your ship. So how exactly do I unlock new guns for my ship? So each ship type has its own level and its own XP bar. And um, let's say I have a level 5 destroyer. That level applies to all the destroyers that I spawn. It doesn't apply to like a particular destroyer that's already on the map. So as you level up a ship type, you'll unlock new turrets and new layouts that you can use in different areas of the ship. So I know on the destroyer on the bow, you can either have a heavy mount or you can have two light mounts with a bunch more machine guns. And as you approach the higher levels, you unlock better anti-air guns. You'll still start with the three inches on the destroyer from level one. I'm not going to make it so that you have to like go out into battle with a destroyer with only many guns on it. That would be evil. For other ship types, you won't start with the three inch. Um, for example, the sub tracer, you'll start with an anti-air gun on the bow, and then eventually you can unlock heavier guns like the three inch. Great! I'm so excited to test out this new weaponry. How do I earn the levels I need to unlock them? So to level up a ship type, all you have to do is be a crew member on that type of ship. So if I wanted to level up my Corvette, all I'd have to do is go and fight on a Corvette, doesn't have to be mine, just be part of the ship crew. And if someone on that ship shoots down an enemy plane, or sinks an enemy ship, or kills a player, the entire ship crew will get the same amount of XP from it. It's done like this so that you don't have to be a gunner to level up, everyone will gain the same amount. So you could be repairing, you could be on the sonar, you could be driving, and you'll still get the same XP rewards as everybody else on that ship. Well, that's it. We barely scratched the surface of the new content coming to Navy Simulator in this video. You'll just have to play the game to find out everything coming in this update and customize a ship of your own. Navy Simulator will turn three years old in January and the continuous support from you guys really helps motivate us in putting out these amazing updates. So on behalf of all of the team, thank you so much for playing. So with that being said, We'll see you soon on the battlefields of the Trident Isles.